Hello everyone. So to respond, a lot of requests from students regarding um, the challenges uh, associated with the final project. And I have decided to record my own screen and uh, show you the step-by-step -step, um, process to create uh, some of the major components of the final project. I'm mean, using Autodesk Screencast. Uh, one of the biggest advantage of Screencast obviously is it actually records the keystrokes, meaning um, the different buttons actually click as I actually want, um, you know, go through the modeling process. So for beginners, this is very useful because you can clearly see um, to complete a command, what necessary steps are needed. So I would strongly recommend you follow the video uh, tutorials and to complete your project as a, as a team, obviously. So our goal today is trying to show you how to utilize the datum file I gave you with all the uh, grid lines and level lines to create the columns and the column footings, um, as well as um, the wall foundation foundations. Obviously, uh, we're gonna separate, uh, separate those uh, into different, uh, you know, videos. So that way you would not watch a video too long. So the, in the first video, I'm going to show you how to place the columns uh, <clears throat> using the grid lines uh, we have already created here. Um, of course, um, this is very important, uh, not only just for this project. Uh, you have to realize in the future, if you work on a, a BIM project, it is oftentimes essentially important for you to set up those uh, datum, uh, which meaning the grid lines and levels because they establish a virtual uh, framework for you to host those different component. Um, but all, as we use those grid lines, low lines more, you will find out how convenient it is to have those um, components in place. So let's get started. Um, to start our um, columns, we have to understand the print reading part as well. Don't forget, this is construction graphics class. You're supposed to really practice your print reading skills. So in plan grid, uh, if we okay, go to the um, foundation plane, okay, so you will actually realize we are going to place the columns per grid line. Uh, for instance, the first uh, group of columns we're going to place is going to be at grid line A. So obviously, grid line A um, have a total of 10 columns. The two, col two, two different places we do not have columns specifically is the A1 in the section because there is a grout column which is a masonry and same way on the A12, okay? So we have a total of columns uh, from A2 all the way through A11, okay? We have two different sizes of column in this particular project and um, both are actually hollow uh, sectional steel. Uh, we have two different sizes. One size is actually um, HSS 5 by 5 by 3 8. The other one will be HSSS 5 by 5 by 5 16. Okay. Now, in order to place the columns, not only we need to know the size of the column, their position, but also we have to know, um, you know, their uh, heights and the depth. Okay, that's something we refer to the uh, Joyce bearing. Um, there was one note I would like you to take a look. Uh, this is very important, okay? So this is related to the depth of the column because the bottom of the column will be actually the footing that supports the column. So it's very important for you to realize where are actually those uh, footings located. So according to this particular note, the top of the internal footing elevation is gonna be minus eight inches, which means the columns in the middle of the building is gonna go all the way down to minus eight inches. But the top of exterior footing, okay, exterior footing elevation is minus one foot four inches, which means for grid line A, because all the columns are sitting on the perimeter of the building, they're considered to be the exterior uh, columns. So they're actually going all the way down to minus one foot four inches. So keep that in your mind. Now let's go find out the um, top constraints, which is George bearing of the uh, columns. So where can we find that information? If you ask yourself that quick. So this is a foundation plan. Foundation plan shows the size of a column, okay, the type of column, their supporting footing, and uh, their location, right? But does not tell you their joist bearing heights. That is on the uh, framing plan, which is the S2 joints. So let's take a look at S2.1, okay? 
So zoom in a little bit, you'll find out here, close to the grid line A, uh, the little uh, label here, you'll find out your sparing is plus, which means above ground, 16 foot, 4 inches, and between cotton line 1 through 5. Reason being, I have to tell you between cotton line and 5, because there may be variations at different places. Okay, so this is exactly the case. If you go to uh, S2.2, which is unit B, Okay, you see this is the key point, right? Remember what does the key point do? Key point tells you which part of the whole okay, facility you're currently looking at. So unit B is the middle section and it has a draw sparing of 16 feet 9 inches, which is 4 inches above 16 foot 4 inches, right? So those are only between column line 5 and 8, which means the column A, 5 through 8 they have different draw sparing uh, heights keep that in mind this is a very very important so same uh, rule apply to cut line uh, grid line b and c if you pay attention to grid line b remember that the draw sparing for the rest of the building on grid line b is draw sparing was supposed to be 15 um, feet 6 inches but here is 15 feet 11 inches which is also 5 inches taller for um, grid line C, remember, uh, we only have, okay, we only have columns in section unit B. For unit A on the left side and the unit C on the right side, you only have concrete masonry walls, which are those walls, right? So for grid line C, things are actually easier because you only have one, two, three, and four columns. And uh, their draw sparing is supposed to be 15 feet 1 inches, which is also 5 inches taller than the masonry wall. Okay, remember the difference between 15 1 inch, 14 8 inch, or oh, actually 5 inches. Okay, because 1 foot is 12 inches. Okay, now we already got all the dimensions we need to place the columns, and now let's get started to place this column. Go back to Autodesk Revit. So I will actually go to the draw sparing 16 for reason being because when actually we're trying to place a structure component instead of like going from its bottom we actually have to go all the way to its top so we're placing the columns at grid line A which has a draw sparing of 16 feet 4 inches we need to come to this draw sparing floor plane now we'll go to the structural tag because we are actually placing structure component and we're going to place columns Okay. Currently, we do not have the hollow sectional um, columns available. Okay, so we only have the wide flange column. So what you're going to do is we have to load family, and to choose the type of the HSS column we want. So we need to go to the structural columns folder, and click on steel, and choose the first HSS because the second one is around, we need the square one, okay? So we're gonna choose HSS hollow uh, structural section column, double click, and it will bring actually a window for you to select all the different sizes. So let's scroll down all the way down to HSS 555, five, five, okay? And we need the two tab here, the two tabs here. So HSS 5x5x3 five by five by eighth and 5x5x5 five by five by five sixteenth. Those are the two columns we need in this particular project. Okay, click on load. Now we're ready to go. So at the grid line A, all the column sizes are actually 5x5x3 five by five by eighth, which is good. Okay. Now, the question you have to have to ask yourself is do you want to place those columns one by one or maybe find a better way to do this? Well, obviously we have already introduced the con uh, concepts about placing multiple columns using the grid lines as a tool. So specifically, we need to go to the multiple panel right here and choose add grids. So what then let's do, uh, basically this will allow you um, to utilize the grid lines and uh, create columns at intersections of the grid lines. So in this case, we want to place okay columns between grid line A and all those other vertical grid lines except for 1 and 12. So we will 
select the grid line A first, and don't forget to hold your control key, okay? And uh, you zoom out a little bit so you will see all the vertical grid lines clearly. And uh, now I'm drawing a box from right to left. So ask yourself again, what is the difference between drawing a section box from left to right or right to left? Okay. So this way we have selected all the grid lines involved here, including the horizontal grid line A and all the vertical grid lines from 2 through 11. And if you zoom in a little bit now, you will notice, okay, there's actually a little column being placed there, but we're not done. We actually have to check the green check mark to finish in order to place those columns. Click on finish. Now, obviously, in order to jump out of a command, you have two different options there, right? You can click on the modify button, or you can actually key, uh, hit the escape key twice on your keyboard. So let's take a look at a 3D view of this model at this moment, okay, which is actually the quick access toolbar right here. Go to default 3D view, or you can go to the view tab and click on the 3D view real quick, okay. So as we see, we have 10 columns placed at grid line A. However, our job is not done yet. Why? Because Remember, the middle section of those four columns here, they belong to unit B. And they have a much, well, not much, but five inches um, difference from the rest of the columns because their drawer sparing, uh, their, their drawer sparing is at 16 foot 9 inches. So what we have to do now is selecting those four columns and you notice their current drawer sparing, which is the top level, is actually 16 feet 4 inches. All we have to do is add 5 inch, okay, on top of that to make it 16 feet 9 inches. So then we're literally done with the first, okay, group of columns at grid line A. So follow the same exact methodology to place the columns at grid line B and C. Remember, you have 10 columns at grid line B as well, but, however, okay, but, um, remember, all those columns at grid line B is going to be considered to be internal, okay, internal column. So they're going to reach all the way to the interior footing, which is, okay, at minus 8 inches. Okay, so that's the difference. And also, the joist bearing, okay, according to our plan grid joints, okay, joist bearing for grid line B, for unit A and C, it's 15 foot 6 inches for unit B, which is the one we're currently looking at, it's 15, okay, 11 inches. So keep that in mind. For grid line C, things are a little bit different, okay, because we do not have any columns for unit A or C. We only have four columns here at unit B. So their just frame is going to be 15, one foot, 15, one in, uh, 15 foot, 1 inch, okay. So those four columns are going to be at draw sparing 15 feet 1 inch and the bottom okay the depth is going all the way down to the top of the interior footing which is also minus 8 inches so hopefully this video um, will ha actually help you to understand the workflow about placing columns okay and also hopefully um, it will actually allow you to better understand the workflow uh, working with Revit okay so make sure you review this uh, video before you're actually trying to place your columns. And um, you don't forget to complete all the columns at grid line A, B, C before you uh, watch the next video. All right, that's it for this video, and I will see you uh, in the next video. Thank you.